So the history b behind the sockeye roundup is such that about a decade ago, we only had a handful of fish coming back from, from the ocean. And if you only had seven or eight fish coming back in any one year, if you couldn't get your hands on all of them, it was important. Uh, that, could, that could hurt the genetic uh, the contribution to the population. So there were years in the early 2000s where we saw two or three fish hanging below this weir. They refused to come up and get trapped in the system for whatever reason. So we decided, you know what, we've got to get our hands on them and incorporate them in the broodstock program or spawn those fish. So we started the sockeye roundup and it's really become an annual event. We always have a handful of sockeye that swim 900 miles back to this structure and they just hang out below the weir. So it's pretty easy to get a group of folks together, some long seines. We're gonna stretch that seine across the river, loop it around, and you know I suspect we're gonna see 50 or 60 sockeye. It's a big event. These fish that we collect are gonna get, we're gonna work through some data processing load them up on a truck and then take them to Redfish Lake. And there's another weir structure like this on Redfish that they're really confined to that lake. We want them to spawn on the lake and fish are really opportunistic when they, when they get closer to spawn. You know, Mother Nature maybe wants them to go up the Salmon River, but we're gonna put them in Redfish and here in the next couple of weeks, they are gonna spawn in Redfish. So for, for me, I've told a lot of the staff I work with, I work with biologists that have been in the agency since the 70s or 80s, 20 or 30 years, and you're gonna see something today that these folks have spent their entire career working for the agency and have never seen or held an anadrum of sockeye salmon. This is pretty big. If, if you're a native of Idaho, you know, when you and I were a kid, the reality of seeing a sockeye, they just were not around in the 70s and the period of the 80s. They were all but extinct. In 1991, the Shoshone Bannocks petitioned for a listing. We listed the sockeye and, and every, all of these cooperators, the tribes, IDFG, Bonneville Power, NOAA Fisheries, it's, it's really neat to see a concerted effort and, and start to see fish responding. I mean, recovery is a long ways down the road, but they're responding from our, our, our efforts. And yeah, you're gonna see something today in some of these folks that 20 years ago, we'd have bet money that you never had an opportunity to see it, so good things.